Hey everyone, thanks for joining in on the podcast. I really appreciate it. A lot of you guys have been listening to the very first one I put out and that's so awesome. I am absolutely blown away from as many people have been sharing it and even just messaging me saying, hey, I want, you know, I really want to be on it. Like, I can't wait to see like, where it goes. And I'm just like a little overwhelmed about it. And honestly, I, this is like one of the best decisions I've made in a long time of actively doing something. It's just so great to talk to people about music again. Uh, today, I was able to talk to Andrew Hopper from a band called I Think Atlantis, um, a little north from Sacramento, but they do play down here, and that's really awesome. And I really can't wait to actually catch one of their live shows. Um, I know um, their other member, Jason, a little bit more um, than Andrew. So today, we got to talk, and it was really great being able to actually meet someone else from the band. Now, they're, uh, they're both going through a storm right now, so the audio does break out a little bit here and there throughout the podcast and i do apologize on that but again you know we're having a storm so skype uh, isn't too reliable but again you know i really appreciate the time that andrew gave me to talk to me about everything and it really is awesome to talk to somebody else in the scene about music especially someone i don't really know so it's like an uh, outsider's perspective it's really wonderful um, I really hope that you guys enjoy this uh, podcast. Um, I will be getting uh, Jason on a podcast pretty soon as well. So, you know, be on the lookout for that one. Thank you. So, no, this is awkward. cool this is the first time i'm actually like talking to you the only person i ever have met is uh jason and talk to jason uh yeah i mean i'm good um just doing the normal stuff you know work working boring life stuff for right now until covid's like over with more i guess <laughs> Yeah, no, I feel you. I'm just like, last year was such a drag, and this year, there is light at the end of the tunnel, but it just seems so far away at the same time. It's like, right there. Right, it's right there. Yeah, it's like, it's right there, but there's like, it's weird, because it's like, yeah, there's some band, I won't like name any names or anything, you know, I don't. I don't like causing drama in the scene or anything like that, but there's bands that'll do like little house shows or whatever, and like, I guess that's okay if everybody that goes to it's okay with what they're doing, but I don't know. I just look at, like, bigger bands and what they're doing, and they're not putting people at risk like that. So that's definitely, like, not something I would want to do. I want to wait till everything is, like, open back up, even though I want to play so bad. Yeah, no, I feel you, like... My uh, my whole thing is, if your favorite band isn't doing it, don't do it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, actually, I made a Facebook post um, that was literally just that. And some like there was a couple people that were like all upset with me for saying that. And, I, and I'm just like, well, I, for one, wouldn't do something if my, if like my idol band... Like, if they were like, yeah, don't play shows right now because, you know, this pandemic's happening. Well, guess what? I'm not playing shows. If they were like, oh, we could play shows now and they could hold a, you know, a 10,000 capacity room and fill it and still have no COVID outbreak after, then guess what? My my little 200 capacity room is going to be okay to, to yeah. host. <laughs> and yeah. so, yeah, I don't know. But, like, how are you doing, though? Like, how is Andrew? How are you? Uh, I'm good, man. I've, you know, just been trying to keep my mind as busy as possible and, like, come up with a lot of new ideas and, like, this this downtime where we're not really playing shows or anything and just, like, I don't know, thinking of stuff, like, also, like, merch ideas and, and actually, uh, one of our videos I actually edited, it was the one for, uh, taking chances 
and I'd actually okay. never edited a video before, so it's kind of cool. This actually gave me the time to teach myself how to do that. That's really cool. I literally just bought a bought a camera um, for video because I wanted to film sets of bands, and um, the guy that I bought it from, he actually filmed Enterprise Earth music videos with it and another band called College Radio. So I was like, damn, like, I have this camera that he used. And he's like, yeah, I have all the presets for it. He's like, you can just film. He's like, you're good. You just need to get a lens that you want to use. Hell yeah, that's sick. Yeah, I'm I'm kind of – I want to do the photography a little bit, but I'm a little bit more into the video aspect of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But so tell me, um, tell me about uh, I think Atlantis. Where did uh, where did that all come from? Like, uh, like the name, or like how we were formed, or what? Uh, wherever you want to start first, uh, we could go with uh, you know, how did you guys form? Because I think Jason was the first person, right? Or I don't remember. It was a while ago. I don't know how long exactly. Like the name I think Atlantis has been around. I know. That was Jason's like idea for the for the name, and so when I joined, I was just like, "Dude, that's a sick name!" Like, hell yeah! <laughs> yeah. But uh, he he had this idea for I think Atlantis for a long time before there was any music at all. It was just an idea, and he told me, uh, "I hope I get." the definition of the name right um if not he can explain it for you a little bit better but um basically like every band he's been in either broke up or something happened before he was able to actually like go on tour and all these other things you know basically live the musician's dream i guess and uh basically it's uh what the name means is uh, that anybody that kind of tells you that you can't do something, they'll sink with you. And so, like, even if you have to sink an entire city, like, sinking in Atlantis, like, you're going to do that so that you can fulfill your dreams. You're going to do whatever it takes. I thought that was really cool when he told me that. I actually didn't know that till like, a month ago. I was like, hey, so, <laughs> but, like, what does it mean? I, like, I have no idea. Um, so yeah, it was just an idea of that for a long time, and I think I met Jason around 2017, and we had just originally planned on just being like an internet band, just recording music and putting it out there for people to hear, not playing any shows at all, and then we start, I started writing some stuff, and, uh, some other people got involved because they were like, dude, we want to play this stuff. And then <laughs> started a lot of shows and then never really got around to putting music out until this year because we had, like, a lot of – not a lot of member changes, but it took us a long time to find new members, I guess, so we could keep it going. Yeah. Are you guys a – are you a three-piece? Is that what you guys are? Yeah, we're a th- – Three piece right now. Um, yeah, our, our basis is the computer at the moment. Uh, hey, you, it's fine. You know what? This is one thing about that's been a thing about a Titan is that like, you know, we've had member, we've had quite a few different members, um, and it's always because you know somebody you know they move on. They're just like, yeah, I just don't want to do this anymore. Uh, some people decided, hey, I'm gonna go have a family. I want to you know get married or have kids. Like. I don't want to do the tour life. Um, and so it sucked when they left, but at the same time, it's like, dude, we have backtracks for every instrument besides vocals because it's like the show must go on. And I would, I honestly would never play a show with, uh, without a drummer. But if for some fucking reason we had to, we have backtracks that have drums on them. Like it's yeah. just the nature of the beast. Yeah, that's really smart to do. I mean, especially, like, say you're on tour and somebody gets injured or they get sick, you can't find somebody to fill in for them because, I mean, depending on how difficult the music is to play, it'd be really hard to find a replacement. So, yeah, you got to do what you got to do. 
I, I know I know Periphery was having some serious issues when uh, they were on their last tour. I think by the end of the tour, they were down to like three members or something like that, but they were still playing. It was crazy. Hey, you know what? I we um we played uh, so our lead guitarist at the time he left, and we were like weeks. Like I'm talking about like three weeks away from recording or from finishing our record, and I'm just like, fuck, we we're <laughs> filming music. Yeah, I'm like we're filming music videos for this. He's not in the band. We have solos in our shit, so we decided, fuck it, we'll have two guitar. We'll have me and my bassist move to guitar because he is actually really good at guitar. So he moved to guitar, and we just backtrack bass, and we were like, fuck it, it just works that way. And so we were a four piece, and up until like, um, well, so that was 2019. That was June 2019. So we've been a four piece since up until uh, December 2019. We were we had a, a bassist fill in for one of the tours, and then we went back to being a four piece until all of 2020, pretty much up until like a couple months ago. Like two months ago, we have a, a we have a new bassist now, and he's actually the guy that um, he's Austin, the guy that was from the other podcast that I did. Okay. Um, yeah. So, I mean, we we haven't really officially announced it, but at the same time, it's like we've already told people, like, oh yeah, Austin's playing bass for us now. Like, that's cool. But like our vocalist, though, we're keeping that super down low because that's the that's the biggest member change that we've had. Yeah. And, you know, with a voice, too, it, it's, so, it's so much different than, like, just, I mean, not, not to say changing a guitarist or something doesn't somewhat change the sound of a band, but I feel like a lot of people uh, that are and aren't musicians mostly notice the change of vocals. 100%. I, I 100% feel you. Because, like... It's like if you had a new vocalist come in and try to fill in for more like it's like a fucking what's his name um Kurt Cobain he's dead and then you're like oh yeah no we're just gonna get another vocalist that'll just do Nirvana it's like no you don't that's just not how that works like <laughs> um but being in a still a really small tiny band that we're in it's like you know we're okay with getting a new vocalist and moving forward. But we're making sure that instrumentally we are 100% different than the last record we put out. Like, already the new songs that we're writing are a thousand times more better and progressive. I'm not going to say progressive metal, but progressive as in our development into music. And, like, the the song you guys have out, the last one you guys put out, with, like, man, that, that fucking music video is so cool. How you have, like, the ocean in your silhouettes. Like, that inspired me so much. Thanks, dude. Yeah, that that was the first music video I ever put together, and it we all just the three of us did it. We just we got some lights, we got like a white backdrop, and then I, you know, just adjusted the settings on the camera, and then uh, as much as I could, and then went in after and added all those effects, and I just happened to have some like videos of like the ocean from when, and I would take trips to the ocean and stuff, and. I don't know. It just it just worked out. It was perfect, and it I mean it didn't cost us anything to make. It was sweet. Oh my dude! I'm like literally as soon as I watched that video, I sent it to my band chat, and I was like, "Oh my god, look at this video! Listen to this song!" I was like, "Fucking bump this shit!" And like we all like listened to it, and then we had a we had like a band meeting because our drummer lives in LA, so he came up to visit and like that whole weekend. We were just watching the video like all weekend listening to it. Cause like the song's great. And the video was even more badass. I was just like, this is fucking like next level shit, dude. This is great. Yeah. I just, I, I kind of wanted to recreate like some of the stuff that I've seen out of like some of my favorite bands with like the silhouette videos. I just always really liked those. And yeah, I don't know. Just adding the waves into the background and then, uh, having a lot of kaleidoscope effects i don't know it i don't know it just fits the genre too i feel like yeah you can it was great some weird shapes in there or something <laughs> yeah dude it was it was honestly solid i oh uh, and like i said the, the song was really great i remember when jason first showed me the song 
I, I think it was that one. He showed me one. Like, this was July of last year. And he was like, oh, you want to hear, like, one of the songs we're going to – we're putting out? Because he was at my house um, when one of his other friends was trying out for um, bass. And that's how I met Jason. And, um, yeah, I just remember I was listening to it in my car, and I was like, dude, this shit's going to be fucking badass when it drops. And he's like, yeah, it's not even done yet. And I was like, fuck, this is so good. Yeah, it took us – so it took us a long time to actually release that. Like I said, we have been – so we had been playing those songs or, like, pretty similar to those songs because those songs have evolved a lot since 2017 when we first wrote them. When we first wrote them, we were in a completely different tuning. We The songs sounded more like, I don't know, like more melodic hardcore and not as, like, metalcore or pro- – I don't know, progressive or whatever, whatever you want to call it, but it was a lot more like melodic hardcore, kind of like almost post hardcore. Some people even said like shoegazy, but, um, but yeah. And then, um, we, uh, ended up, uh, losing one of our, uh, members. Um, and then we just, you know, didn't play shows for a really long time. And I was finally just like, you know, I've always wanted to be in like a like a cool like melodic metalcore band. I was like, I'm gonna take all these songs, I'm gonna rewrite them, and we're just gonna put them out. And then, in me doing that, we I ended up showing Ray, who was a uh, drummer in uh, my old band, which was called uh, Frequencies. We were like a technical death core band, I guess. Really fat, heavy, yeah, just just madness. And then uh, he heard it, and he was like, dude, I really like this. I want to play this. And then so once we added him, we went and rewrote everything even further Damn. because cause he went and rewrote all the drums. And so now it's actually, like, what we all, like, wanted. And it's, it's sick. I love it. Yeah, no, I, I definitely like it. And... I'm sure you, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's you that I've been talking to on your band page or somebody, cause I was the one sharing your stuff being like, yo, this is like literally the next big, like out of area sack band that's gonna come up. Like you guys, like I think are gonna do really well in Sacramento. Cause Sacramento is a really good metal, like scene when it comes to supporting, um, really nice metalcore or metal musicians. Like, uh, they treat each other like family over here. Um, there's some that I would say are not my type of people to really hang out with, but you know, it's like everyone has like their own clicks, you know, but I, you know, I'm still going to be nice to everybody I see. I'll still give hugs to people. I'll still say hi. Like there's still people at the end of the day. And, you know, at one point it's kind of like, a uh, fuck it. We're at a show. We're going to have a good time. Even if you and me are not friends on the internet, like in person, you're going to be my best friend in person because of the fact that if something bad happened right now, I would fucking cover your head. You know, I would be there with you. Like, you know, like that's just kind of how we are in the community. Um, and like, I want to bring you guys to Sacramento so fucking bad, especially like, cause uh, I don't know if you ever heard of a uh, Titan Fest. Uh, I've heard of Titan Fest. Uh, I've never been to it though, but I have heard of it. Okay. Yeah. So we're the ones that headline it and, I we were supposed to have a really fat lineup last year or uh, yeah last year but then you know COVID happened. So what we've been thinking about doing for this year f- shows actually happening is not really double that size but take the bands that were supposed to play last year and then have like like do like m- two different stages and have one for 2020 bands and one for 2021 bands and like I would love to have you guys on it. That'd be sick. Yeah, yeah hopefully, like, hopefully that could happen. Hopefully it all works out, you know, with COVID and everything. It's pretty unpredictable, but, yeah, fingers crossed. That'd be really sick. Yeah, I, like, I I want to do, like, let me say, like, I wanted to do it originally at um, Cafe Colonial and The Colony. Like, have both venues just playing bands back and forth. Like, make it, like, you know, because I wanted to give back to those uh, smaller venues that literally don't have anybody going, you know, because of the fact that COVID, they need help. And I know Live Nation's going to cover Holy Diver and fucking Ace of Spades. They don't need 
all of these local bands to help them out, to be honest. But there's, like if there's we, life, no matter what. Oh yeah, because of the Live Nation. Um, but like I don't know, I just thought it'd be so cool if it was like we you know have one stage B for 2020 bands, one B for 2021 bands, and then I was like, well fuck it, like if we're gonna do something like that, let's just rent two stages and a sound system and like literally go to a park and like actually have like vendors there and like go all out. But at the end of the day, it's like, dude, that costs a lot of fucking money. (laughs) So yeah, we're still thinking like, Hey, you know what? It'll be a hundred percent easier to just do it at cafe colonial. But I don't know. There's so many bands that I wanted on it that are not even together anymore. And it sucks. But then at the same time, there's a lot of bands that probably would be like, yeah, no, I don't want to play that. Like, I don't want to play at those venues. And it sucks that people even have that mentality. Like, those venues are awesome. Yeah, uh, I, I've i actually played uh, both those venues in I Think Atlantis. Um, I played Cafe Colonial, like, when I Think Atlantis was starting out. I think it was, honestly, it was our second show ever as a band. It was the Cafe Colonial. We were close. Hell yeah, we're, we're getting to, like, the bigger cities, like, this is sick. And then, uh, it's funny, actually, our last, our last show we played before COVID was, uh, what do you say it was called? It was called The Colony? It's right here. Yeah, right The now. Colony. Yeah, we played that. So, yeah, that, that was our last show. Yeah. I, I, I don't really care what the venue is, as long as, you know, people are, we want to come out and have a good time. I don't really care. <laughs> yeah, I feel like if we were to make it, like, I don't know, I feel like if we were going to do it there, I would probably be, like, 100% proceeds are going to the venue. And if your band isn't okay with that, then, you know, don't play this year or something. Because I just feel like it's, you know, if sell your merch to get gas money, but, like, People are going to go to support the bands, but I also I want them to support the venue that is allowing all these bands to have a place to play, and they really need it. Yeah, those those smaller venues definitely need help. Like, to be honest, I think in, like, the northern, more northern California area, like, like Redding and Chico, we're, I, we have, like, maybe one venue in Redding and one venue in Chico, and that's about it, and they're, they're not really like, high-capacity venues or anything. But, yeah, places like that, they they definitely need the help. Yeah, well, wait, you're talking about Concrete Lodge in Reading, huh? Uh, yeah, which I've I've never been. It's a skate shop. I don't imagine it's probably uh, super huge. No, it's a skateboard shop, and they just move, like, all the stuff out of the inside, and then bands just play inside. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I mean, it's cool, though, like, I, we had a fucking blast, we went there on, uh, one of our tours, and we had an absolute blast there, just because it's just, I don't know, it's just different, you're playing in a skateboard shop, like, fucking throw down. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty sick. Don't, I think, don't you play, like, inside of a half pipe or something, or? Uh, I heard they built a half pipe, and that's where bands are playing now, I wasn't there when the half pipe was there. Uh, okay, okay. Yeah. What about Chico? What's out there? Is it just that big ass venue? Uh, Chico. Okay, so Chico used to have the 1078, which was like a art gallery, and that that was sick. Like that that was one of my like favorite times to like be in the Chico scene because I mean we we had some really killer bands go through. Like we had uh, Body Snatcher, Spy nice. and and damn in one night it was dude it was insane that's cool uh, and then um i think 1078 ended up moving locations so during that time they didn't have a lot of shows there and then i think they started playing again i'm not totally sure at, at their new location and i don't know if they stopped or what but it seems like everybody started moving over to Ike's, which is literally like a sandwich shop, but um, they. So I don't I don't know who uh, brings like a PA system or anything like that, but um, I, I would say a lot of proceeds need to go towards like decent sound equipment for these people that are just bringing whatever they have to 
like places like a sandwich shop or a coffee shop or whatever, you know, th- those people are going to need help too. Yeah, I I feel you on that. I like that. Like when we did our the last one we did, we held it at our house and we had like um we have 150 people written down like i had their names and i had them like write like their age and i had somebody even check their id because we had alcohol there and i well, didn't want any under underage drinking because it's like this is the first festival or not festival but like well it was festival but this is the first like party with live music i'm hosting and like i'm just renting this house i don't want to fucking get in a lot of trouble so i told all my neighbors like hey we're you know hosting a halloween party with live music um this is like a one out of a, one in the time thing if you want to come out let me know if you don't want me to do it oh, excuse me um let me know and we had no complaints we we were playing live music till like 1 30 in the morning and we had like 150 people show up and so i was like just i mean i was pretty drunk but i was also like just so happy and like ecstatic about the whole thing and we used um our house pa which is it's a pretty good pa like it's not the best but it's also like it's good enough you know and yeah, for- when it comes to like a venue a venue needs to have like you know everything but i mean for smaller like sh- like smaller venues like colony and stuff what they have is perfect it's it's the live music, it's the energy, that's all that matters. You don't need all the bells and whistles. You literally just need the the loud music and just the crowd. And those are the only two things you need. And you'll have a phenomenal show. Yeah. No, for sure, yeah. But, yeah, I don't know, I just... Sometimes I just start spouting off and I just start rambling on about the shit that i've done because i just get super excited about it and i'm just like i'm like there's so much i want to talk about i have to like limit myself on what i talk about because i'll just keep going on a tangent and then i'll start spilling all of these all the ideas that we are cooking up and and i i can't spoil anything or i'll get in trouble (laughs) yeah i know be like being vague as a band is something like well, I I, tr- I try to push it pretty hard, uh, be- because I, I I like surprising people. I, I I just like you know nobody not really knowing what our next move is gonna be, and then just dropping something crazy. Um, I mean, ob- obviously with some like promotion involved in there, but um, yeah, for for the, for the most part, like the I think. She- the most exciting thing is, like, I'll, I'll record something that I just think sounds sick, and I'll just, like, post, like, a, you know, a 30-second clip of, like, the instrumental or something on my Instagram or something. But that that's about it. Like, I, I try to keep it really vague, as vague as possible. Because I feel like it, it it draws people in. Like, it, it makes them curious, like, what you're doing instead of just... And you lay it all out there, and they're just like, oh, okay, it's, yeah, it's what they do. And it works great for some bands, but I don't know. For me personally, I I just like surprising people. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm on the same page. But at the same time, like, I just get, I'm like, I can't, I'm like a fucking kid in a candy store. I just can't contain myself, and I just get so excited. I'm just like, I start sending people, like, fucking video clips of, like, shit we're working on, and then my band members are like, can you fucking not? And I'm just like, I'm sorry, like, I just, I have to, I need somebody to tell me, like, hey, that sounds like it's gonna be good, keep going, like, (laughs) fuck. (laughs) It's definitely good to, like, have those, like, close friends that you know aren't gonna, like, you know, spill the beans to everybody to, you know, kind of review your music, like, I, I do that a bit, too, but I'm just really careful about who I do I do it with? Yeah, I only do it to, like, like a handful of people. There's people I know that are not the kind of people that are going to be like, oh, let me screen share this shit, or let me screen record it and then fucking send it to someone else. Yeah. Ah, oh, fuck that. So how long, uh, how long have you been playing for? Uh, to be honest, I, I don't know, like, exactly how long I've been playing guitar. Uh, let's see here. Uh, 2021, so, I don't know. I could be totally wrong here. I want to say maybe seven years. I don't know. I, 
Actually, like, the first instrument I picked up, though, was piano, and I picked that up at, like, a really young age. So the, the second I was able to understand how to actually, you know, make some simple chord shapes on a guitar, I don't know, just it came really naturally. I'm still terrible at, like, reading sheet music or anything like that, or even tabs for that matter. But, <laughs> um, yeah, it's so, like, always played by ear, you know. Um, and piano definitely helped me pick out, like, what things are and aren't supposed to sound like. And, I don't know, that's probably why my music has, like, a lot of layers, because there's a lot of layers in uh, piano playing as well. Yeah, no, I didn't, I mean... I've been playing. I started out on bass in 2014, and then uh, I sold it. <laughs> and uh, I sold it in 2015 uh, after I left my old band. Um, and then I was like, you know what? I'm gonna fucking learn to play guitar. So I went and bought a guitar. And then a year later, it got fucking stolen on Christmas Day. Um, that all is- of my Look. Yeah, dude. Well, uh, so me and Jordan, we moved in together in Sacramento. We got an apartment together. And that was in, uh, that was July of 26, no, that was August of 2016. And, um, September? I'll go with September. Okay. Else. Uh, and I went to my parents' house, but I, so I got off at 11 o'clock on the 24th, drove to my parents' house, which they live like an hour and a half away, and, uh, you know, stayed all day with them on the 25th, and then I came home around 10 o'clock at night, and our light was on, and I was like, huh, that's weird, maybe I forgot it, forgot it, and then I'm, as I'm walking up the stairs, I'm, I look at the fucking clo- uh, the, the doorknob, and I was like, Man, if I turn this knob and it keeps going, I'm just gonna fucking cry. And sure enough, I put my hand on the on the knob and I turned it, and then I took a deep breath and I completely turned it and I opened it up and everything was gone. Our uh, fucking everything, dude. Our clothes, our fucking TVs, our fucking blankets. They fucking took everything. And so I was like. I was so devastated, and I had my guitar signed by a band called uh, Rest Propose. Okay. Oh man, that sucks. Yeah, and I'm, it was Jared Dines' old band. Okay. Yeah, I, I was like, man, I, that name sounds really. <laughs> fam- okay. Yeah, I know. I know exactly what you're talking about now. Yeah, it was when they did their first tour, and it was in San Francisco, and I was like, I would love for you guys to sign my guitar, and they were like, Oh my god, we've never signed a guitar before, and I was like, Cool, and I had the whole band signed it. And yeah. yeah, I got it got stolen a few months later. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, it's a black Schecter, uh, Damien Damien Platinum Diamond yeah. Series. Yeah, it was like it was a really nice guitar too. But then, yeah, that fucking broke my heart. And then I ended up getting a. I was like, you know what? Fuck this! I'm just gonna get a seven string. So I went and got a seven string. I had it for about a week, and I was like, yeah, I'm good. So I took it back. <laughs> I was like, I don't want this shit. I can't play a seven yet. <laughs> But, yeah, I've only been been playing guitar for, well, if you don't count the the almost eight months that I didn't have a guitar, I've only been playing guitar for five years or four years. Damn. Yeah, yeah, that's four. Not at all. I I wouldn't have thought that at all, like, hearing your music. Really? Yeah. (laughs) I would have thought you'd been playing way longer or something. Yeah, no, dude, honestly, like, I, I, I learned a couple, uh, easy ass, like, Bring Me the Horizon songs, and that was it. I, I learned, like, three of them, and then I was like, yeah, I'm just gonna write my own music. Fuck this. Way easier to just write my own music. I feel like, I feel like the, the last songs, like, I was, like, trying to learn how to cover before I decided I was gonna write my own music was some, like, old, like, Bless the Fall from, like, Hollow Bodies when I was, like, still more into that. Like, I still think there's a lot of, like, sick riffs on that album. Like, I know a lot of people give Bless the Fall shit because they're just, like, a lot of people think they're just, like, generic metalcore or whatever, but I don't know. That, their their music definitely helped me, like, get into, 
where I'm at now, and I'll, I don't know, I'll always appreciate that, or even, like, simple bands, like, like, uh, like, Three Days Grace, for instance, like, that kind of brought me into, like, drop tuning for the first time, and they were just, like, super simple chords to play, so I was, like, sick, like, and then, yeah, but, after Bless of Fall, I was like, I am going to start a metalcore band at some point. That's going to happen. That's really awesome. I, I think something that I, if anybody was like, hey, I want to learn how to play music, or I want to learn how to play guitar or drums or whatever, and they have, they don't have the, they don't have the inspiration yet or the drive. They just want to try it. I yeah. think the best way to do it is literally just be like, okay. So, for example, let's say, um, let's say someone's like, oh, I want to play guitar, or no, actually, no, we'll say, oh, I want to play drums, and I'm like, oh, well, what's, you know, what's some of your favorite kind of music, and they're like, oh, I, I really like, you know, some grunge and shit, I like, you know, some of that slower stuff, it's like, all right, well, you know what, I'm going to teach you the fucking drum beat to Smells Like Teen Spirit, and you teach them that, and if that's the only thing they know for the first, like, two hours they're learning how to play drums, they will fucking stick to it, because they will be like, this is how my favorite thing is created, and I just duplicated that. And then that's just going to give them so much fire in themselves to want to do more and cover more songs. Yeah, definitely. Like, And like that's why I'm saying, like, when I first picked up guitar, I was like, I want to fucking learn something that I want to learn. Well, okay, so if we go back to, like, 2007 of me learning guitar, which I didn't, but my cousin Garrett... He plays a bass in a band called White Wolf. He actually taught me how to play Hey There Delilah on an acoustic song, on acoustic guitar. So, I mean, that was like the only thing. Oh, you know what? And he also taught me how to play um, one of the main riffs on the song Darling by I Set the Kill. Okay. Yeah, that was like the first like metal riff I learned or from a metal band or whatever. But then, like, you know, I didn't really catch too much interest in it because I was just, I liked it, but not enough. And then as I was like, yeah, I want to learn with my own self-drive, I was like, fuck it. I'm going to learn a fucking Bring the Rising song. So I was trying to learn um, fucking, what is it called? I learned uh, Sleepwalking. I learned Shadow Moses. And I learned, fuck, what was it? Um, I'm going to fucking look it up. I, I know what it is. I, it's in my brain right now. Like Semp Eternal era, Bring Me the Horizon. Yeah, I, I I learned a few songs out of that too. Like that was that was a sick album. Like when I was first starting to like get into that type of music. Yeah. Oh, it never ends. That was I learned all three in the same yeah. night. Hell yeah. Yeah, but I just wanted. Well, I mean, simple versions of them all. But I was able to play along to the song. That was the important part. Yeah. But. Like, I feel like for you guys, man, you guys are literally going in the right direction for the sound. And, like, Metalcore is making a massive comeback. Because I feel like over the last, like, five years, it's kind of died down and Deathcore has been rising. And I feel like Deathcore and Metalcore are both rising simultaneously. And even Hardcore is, like, fucking flaring up like crazy right now. I mean, I'm not the biggest Knock Loose fan, but fuck, dude, like, their shows are massively successful. Yeah. No, seriously. Yeah, they... When you have an energy, like, knocked loose, it's so hard not to be successful. That I, They're just one of those bands that was just meant to do that. Like, just write music that's just pure anger, dude. Like... Like Spike? <laughs> yeah, Spike's seriously pure anger. That's some seriously ignorant stuff. Dude, uh, yep. me and um, my buddy Jordan, we were playing, uh, it was me, Jordan, uh, Darius, and Cody, their producer. We were all playing Smash, and he is nothing like you would think. He is just such a nice, gentle human being. Both of them are, him and Cody. That <laughs> That's actually, like, well, it's not hard to believe, but... <laughs> When I saw them in Chico, dude, he was going off. He was like, I want to see you fucking kill somebody. <laughs> like, that was crazy. He was like, come on, Chico. <laughs> <laughs> That's so you know, funny. 
sick though. But yeah, I, I've noticed that with a lot of people like that are in just those really ignorant heavy bands. Like they're just the nicest people when you catch them like after a show or something. Yeah, you know it's actually I saw Spite when they I saw Spite on their like second show ever, and it was on accident. Well, I've seen them twice on accident actually. Before I even knew who they were. So I was went to this uh you know who um I Arsenis and Kill All the Girls is, right? Yeah. Uh, uh yeah, wasn't uh Brett from uh Steak Sauce in that? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and they're from Red Bluff, or some of them were. Red Bluff, I think that's what it's called. Oh yeah, that that's actually uh where where I live. Uh all of us in I think Atlantis live in like different cities actually but we're all close together oh well yeah i think it was red bluff i could be wrong redding or red bluff it's like that area where some of them are from but um so uh their vocalist started a new band called west cliffs do you remember that no i haven't okay i don't i have no idea if they're still doing stuff but so his band was doing a tour and so i was like fuck dude i'm like hella down to go like why not and my friend Alex was like, yeah, my friend's, my friend Cody, his band, Spite, is playing. And I was like, all right, that's cool. Like, I'm down to see them, too. Holy fuck, dude. It was at, at, uh, fuck, what is it called? We play there, actually. It's, um, oh, my God. It's in fucking Cupertino. It's called, uh, oh, my God, I'm going to go fucking crazy. What the hell is that venue call, called? Um, have you ever played in Cupertino before? I have not. Yeah, all right. Give me like I feel one like second. I you're talking about because I I feel like I I saw a couple like live videos of like uh Outlier playing there. Um, yeah, I can't I can't think of what the the name of the venue is. Uh, fuck. I'm like I'm drawing a fucking blank right now. I'm like going through my photos on my phone, seeing if I can find a flyer. But I actually actually you know what. I printed out all my band's shows. Check it out. Oh, wait, here. See uh, you, gonna... like, looking through stuff, but I can hear it. <laughs> all right. So, um, my, okay. Hi, you can see me again. Okay. I just know the quality for audio, for some reason, is really good without the video, so that's why I turned my video off. Okay. All right, but, uh, yeah, no, I got this binder. And it has, like, I printed out all of our fucking show flyers, and I have a whole entire binder full of all of our shows we've ever played. Let me see if I can find the tour one. Holy uh, fuck. Fuck, what is it called? People on the podcast are going to be like, what the fuck are you doing? Ah, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> uh, uh, fuck. Okay, it's not the first tour. Second tour? Tour number two, where is the flyer for that? What the fuck? Okay, it's funny because I found the flyer for it, <laughs> but I don't have a location of what it's fucking called. What a fucking ass hat. <laughs> wait, oh wait. Oh, it's called the X Bar. The X Bar in Cupertino. That's where I saw them for the first time. What is that? Yeah. And, uh,. And then the second time I saw them was in the uh, same year, 2015. But it was funny because um, it was As Blood Runs Black and Lionheart, The Word Alive. And it was at this, it was at the Oakland Metro. It was a oh, huge yeah. festival. And, um, yeah, I saw them there. And, dude, they were playing in, like, this small little back room inside the Oakland Metro. And holy fuck. Fuck, dude. It was so insanely crazy, I literally had to leave. I could not be in there. I was getting fucking beat down. It was insane. <laughs> and then, there's a video about this, actually. The One of the times I saw them, it was they were on tour with a band called Rain. Okay, yeah, I've heard of them. Yeah, they were, um, they were on tour with them, and they fucking played at the Colony. Oh, God. Yeah, so Spy at the Colony, dude... Crowd kill oh. central right there. Yeah, I dude, can, it was. What's up? I, I can I can just see the amount of spin kicks in like windmills right now. Yeah, no. <laughs> so you, okay, so uh, my buddy Jordan, he uh, he fucking got in a fight 
because this guy backhanded um our friend. Well, she's my girlfriend now, but she was just our friend at the time. Backhanded her in the head. And, and, and the Jordan... F- yeah, and Jordan's like, yo, that's not fucking cool, man. Like, that's a girl. Like, don't fucking hit her, you know? She's just standing on the side. The yeah. kid fucking turns around and fucking backhands Jordan. And Jordan's like six, six foot two. Oh, shit. Yeah. Um, and he fucking grabbed that kid by the shirt and fucking punched that kid. And it's funny because if you go to, uh, Rain's Facebook page, they have a fucking video where you see Jordan grab the kid and fucking just knock him out. It's no way. Really- yeah, dude, and um, you just see the entire fucking venue, just all of them just whore Jordan and start, like, a sh- in the head and stuff. It was so funny. Damn. Was, yeah, dude, Spite throws down. Like, God, yeah. I love, I will never miss a, 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 I will never miss a Spite show as, as fucking, as much as I can. Like, I just won't. I refuse to miss any of their shows. See, I feel like when they were in, when it, when they were in Chico, they, I mean, they were still big. Like, they were starting, they were really, like, starting to blow up around that time. But, I don't know, if they, if they played Chico now, like, oh my god, dude. It would have been, it, it would be so scary. I mean, Body Snatcher and Spite in the same night was already scary, but, like, now, years later, everybody would be dead. They'd die. Everybody in the venue would be dead. <laughs> yeah dude like oh my god i saw uh, uh so we played with oceano um like two years ago now i think it was 2019 so yeah two years ago and dude <laughs> that shit's just terrifying <laughs> are you still there oh you no like I oh, cut no. out. No, we're good. Oh, okay. That was really weird. I don't know if that... That was probably on my end. I'm not sure. The weather over here is kind of weird. Well, yeah, we're in a huge-ass storm right now. So everybody that's listening to the podcast, um, there's actually a huge fucking, like, storm happening right now. So, yeah, <laughs> we, uh, we don't have the best uh, connections going on. Like, earlier, dude... My fucking computer, like, just flipped out and just was like, Windows Update. And I was like, what the fuck? No! <laughs> Why at the worst fucking time? <laughs> but, um, oh well, fuck it, shit happens. Um, so, anyways, what is next for you guys? When, do, are, like, do you guys have any plans for shows, or are you still gonna try to, are you gonna play as a three-piece? What's going on? Um, and... Until further notice, like, yeah, we're just going to keep doing the three-piece thing, you know, un- unless, like, the right person comes along and, you know, is stoked on what we're doing and willing to work with us and write with us. But, I mean, r- uh, right now we're uh, we're writing a uh, – I-, I-, I guess I can say this. I, c- I can say we're writing a full length. Uh, right nice. now, um, uh, I, I won't say who is mixing and mastering it, but somebody I'm really, like, stoked on in metalcore right now is going to be mixing and mastering it, and, like, he's de- definitely one of my idols, so it's really awesome that that's gonna happen. It should be, like the best we've ever sounded on recording and also the heaviest the heaviest and also like the most melodic and i don't know just emotional the lyrics are much more emotional too um but yeah uh writing a full length right now you know most most of it's already written we're you know mainly just working on uh drums and uh, the rest of the lyrics right now, but, uh, yeah, I, I'm really stoked on the direction we're going for the next record. That's awesome. That's awesome here. That just reminds me of us a little bit. Yeah, it, it's still, it's still, you know, a, I, I would say, like, the closest song to compare it to, like, the newer stuff we're writing would be, like, our, uh, our EP, like, and, and, track uh which was maelstrom 
it's kind of more in that direction, but we're going even heavier than that. So, um, yeah, it'll it'll be cool. I can't I can't wait for it to be out. I don't know when it will be, um, but yeah, it's gonna be sick. It's gonna be the most record or just most challenging music I've ever written. The most challenging music our drummers ever written. It's gonna be sweet. That's awesome. Yeah, dude, I'm fucking. Oh my god, dude. With the, we have uh three new songs recorded right now, and we just been sitting on them. Literally, we're just sitting on them. Um, and it drives me nuts because it's like every time we write a new song, I'm just like, I want to rewrite our fucking old ones now. Like the ones that right. we've been sitting on, I just want to rewrite them. Because it's like, I know they can be better. So now we're almost backtracking, but we're still pushing forward. And I don't know. I'm just so fucking ready for the future. I'm so fucking tired of not doing anything. Yeah. I think uh, I think when uh, everything is uh, like good to go again as far as shows, though, uh, I think we do plan on playing at least one or two, like... Uh, uh, unreleased uh songs though because yeah we're we're just itching to to for somebody to hear them even if it's just live for now and that and that'll probably be the only way people will hear it for a while until you know the entire process is done but you know yeah we have we have we have a few we're sitting on right now but oh no i can't hear you Oh, I can hear you now. Okay, maybe I put my maybe I put my like hand over the the microphone or something. I'm not sure. Oh, you're good. But um, yeah. Um, we've only played. We have one song that we've played only live. So the only people that have ever heard it or have seen us on one of the tours because we only played it on one of the tours. Um. And uh, we had a great crowd reaction from it, which was well, we played it on one of the one of the tours, and then we played it at our festival headliner. Oh, well, no, we played it on two tours. I lied. We played it on the second tour only because of the fact that yeah, no, so yeah, we've only played it at a couple live shows. Um, but anyways, besides that, um, what are uh. Uh, this is something that I want to start at, that I want to ask like everybody that I have come on here. But like, what would be one of your favorite breakdown riffs ever written that you didn't uh, write? Oh my goodness! Uh, oh man, that's really hard because the like the breakdowns it, are normally my favorite part of this of any song. That's like one of my favorite songs. It's always almost always the breakdown. Um, so, I don't know, like, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll give you two answers because I really can't give just one because I heard a sick one recently. Um, okay, give me three. How about three? Three? Oh, okay. Any order. Okay, all-time favorite breakdown riff ever would be... Uh, the breakdown in the song Dark Bloom by Invent Animate. That breakdown is, dude, it's so sick. It's like a breakdown that forms into a second breakdown that forms into a third breakdown. And it's just confusing and wild towards the end of it. And then it goes to this melodic break. It's so sick. Um, and then uh, a recent breakdown I... Just probably uh, my favorite deathcore breakdown I've ever would be uh, the song Spectre by Humanity's Last Breath off their uh, the recent album Vald Valdi nice. or however you say it I'm not, I'm not sure yeah that that breakdown is so sick um, third one um, okay I'm just gonna th- I'm gonna I'm gonna throw it to knock loose on this one, dude. The the, the uh, opening breakdown of Oblivion's peak 
is so unnecessarily mean, and it always will be. I remember I think Atlantis used to, like, when we were first starting out, we would throw that song at, like, the end of the set just as, like, something fun for people to mosh to. And we played that at a Catholic a Colonial, and people went crazy, dude. Like, it was insane. That's fucking cool. I really want to see you guys play live really bad. <laughs> Really want to play live again, really bad. Yeah, and once shows come back, we'll, we'll play a show together, like no doubt. Oh yeah, definitely. That that's on the books. It ha- it has to happen. <laughs> so, do you have anything uh, anything you'd like to plug, uh, social media wise, or anything of that sort? Where can people find your band and all that before we end the call? Um. We, we're I think Atlantis, we have a Facebook and we have an Instagram, and uh, you can listen to us on pretty much any streaming service you have and have not heard of, so, yeah, <laughs> I guess that's it. Do you, um, do you want to post, do you want to, um, post, do you want to, want anybody to follow on your personal, or you want to keep those personal? Uh... Yeah, I mean, if somebody wants to follow me on my personal, they can. That's uh, that's fine. Um, but yeah, probably just for the most part, just follow uh, I think Atlantis on Instagram, I guess. But if they want to follow me too, that's cool. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> well, I really appreciate you doing this call with me. I'm gonna be doing one with Jason on Sunday, so I'll have yeah. both your guys' episodes like back to back. That'll be sweet. Hell yeah.